Two questions. Why does this worm look fluffy and why does it have legs? Welcome back to Bug of the Week Part 13, brought to you by Little Dudes Insect Academy. And if you're new here, consider subscribing, dropping a like, etc. You guys know the drill. Um, but yeah, let's just jump right into this. This is a crazy, cool Bug of the Week episode. So, enjoy. This is the Velvet Worm. Within their own phylum, that's right, their own phylum of Onychophora. Now, let me briefly explain why the fact that their own phylum, is, having their own phylum is so significant. So basically within the classification of living things, which is the system that we use to um, classify every living organism on the planet. So all plants, all animals, all um, fungi, you know, all that kind of stuff are all categorized into the classification of living things. And within the classification of living things, there are seven main categories, which are kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So kingdom is the highest, and then it goes all the way down to the specifics of genus and species. And then there's also domain, sub subgenus, there's subphylum, all that kind of stuff. But there's also there's just seven main categories which are what I listed. The fact that velvet worms have their own phylum of Onychophora means that they aren't even considered arthropods like all the other bugs I've featured have been. So all the bugs that I've featured have, at, have had at least one thing in common and they've all had more than that, but they've all been arthropods. So they've all been in the phylum of Arthropoda, which means that they have a hard exoskeleton and you know, they're, they don't have a, they don't have a skeleton, they're invertebrates, they have a hard exoskeleton, things like that. So one of the crazy things that this means is that velvet worms are no closer related to a beetle than we are related to a beetle. The only thing that they have in common is that they are both animals. So same thing with humans. We are no closer related to a beetle than a velvet worm is. So. That's just crazy to me. The only thing in common they have is that they're both animals. So you might be thinking to yourself, why is this even being featured on Bug of the Week? It's not a bug. It's not a worm. It's not even an arthropod. Um, and it's, it's not a worm, as the name would suggest. So why am I featuring this? Well, honestly, I can't call it a bug. So I'm just doing this because I think they're super cool and I think you guys would enjoy them and they have some characteristics that are similar to insects and arthropods so um, they kind of fall into that category of creepy crawly bug type things so i just think they're super cool and i thought you guys needed to know about them so yeah now velvet worms and one of their relatives the tardigrade are said to be some of the oldest recorded animals ever some fossils uh, date back all the way to the cambrian period which is just crazy to think about and if you guys want to do some extra research i might feature them later but um look up tardigrades they're super bizarre they're also known as water bears and they are some of the most bizarre creatures i've ever heard of super crazy now like i mentioned earlier velvet worms are not considered arthropods because they lack the hard exoskeleton which is the main characteristic of an arthropod instead they have a bumpy velvet-like skin which is extremely porous and their internals are highly pressurized, which also play a role in their mode of locomotion, which I'll talk about in a minute. Now, these critters will range in size anywhere from 0.6 to 6 inches in length. And they also originate mostly from the damp rainforests of South America, as well as some of the wetlands of Australia. So because of that, velvet worms require a humid climate due to their absorbent skin, which makes them very susceptible to drying to drying out. Another cool thing is that Onychophora actually translates to claw bearers due to their clawed caterpillar-like toe structures, which they use to walk. Onychophorans don't even have any muscles. Like I mentioned earlier, their bodies are actually filled with a liquid, which they shift around from movement, just like a hydraulic would. So due to this, they're actually quite slow, often hiding in the shade away from the dry sun because they could dry out really easily they can't get into shade very fast, so they kind of just stay in the shade most of the time. The eyes of these creatures are similar to that of some segmented worms, 
being simple lateral eyes. So they're not very good at seeing. So because of their poor eyesight, their sense of touch is crucial in their survival, which is why they are equipped with tactile spines, which are even sensitive to air currents. Despite their slow nature and fuzzy appearance, velvet worms are actually fearsome predators within their food chain. They feed on small mites, spiders, larvae, ants, really any small insect that they can find. So you might be asking yourself, how does such a slow creature catch its prey if it eats live prey? Well, onycophorans are equipped with a set of dual nozzles on the front of their bodies, which they use as glue guns. They spray these nozzles of sticky, silk-like glue at a prey item, instantly immobilizing them in their tracks. The velvet worm then slowly slinks over to the trapped insect and slowly eats it using its circular, sickle-like teeth. And yes, they're teeth. They're not mandibles. They're not mouth parts. They're teeth. Crazy. Now, because of their slow, reclusive nature and low number of species diversity, they're actually quite difficult to find in the wild and seem to be quite low in numbers in the wild. Although maybe we just aren't finding them because sometimes they can be really small, they're really slow, they only hide in the dark, um, so they're often hard to find, but who knows? These animals are still so mysterious that we don't even know all the specifics of their mating or development behaviors. We aren't positive how they developed or their how they develop is there a larval stage is there a nymph stage do they have a metamorphosis at some point we're not actually sure about the mating or development behaviors of these animals which is just crazy to think about so i hope you enjoyed this not bug <laughs> of the week um but yeah if you enjoyed this go check out all the other episodes i've got a bunch um listed in the playlist in the channel and then also Take your time to like, comment, and subscribe um, on this video, and I will see you all next week, and keep on bugging.